This is good. Um, what was I gonna do? I totally forgot. Oh, I was gonna change the streaming info. I'm gonna go to just chatting. I don't think software is working anymore. I haven't been coding actually on stream. I've just been kind of talking about books. Okay. So, yeah, I think that I just kind of want to go through, um, this wander, I've been trying to come up with a storytelling format. Um, so it'll probably be like a half hour of me just kind of talking about um, these concepts and then trying to storyboard them by delving through it. So that's kind of the direction I'm thinking for this. Um, so let's just listen to these quotes and hear what they say and then uh go from there this is going to be about hunter gathering gathering the hunters homo homini lupus said plotus man is a wolf to man if hunter-gatherers appeared lithe and healthy, it was because the fat and slow had all been shot in the back at dawn. Here is the data. From the Kung in the Kalahari to the Inuit in the Arctic, two-thirds of modern hunter-gatherers have proved to be in a state of almost constant tribal warfare, and 87% to experience annual war. War is a big word for dawn raids, skirmishes, and lots of posturing, but because these happen so often, death rates are high usually around 30% of adult males dying from homicide. From The Rational Optimist That's crazy, that's like 3 out of 10 people. The warfare death rate of 0.5% of the population per year that was typical of many hunter-gatherer societies would equate to 2 billion people dying during the 20th century instead of 100 million. At a cemetery uncovered at Jebel Sahaba, in Egypt, dating from 14,000 years ago, 24 of the 59 bodies had died from unhealed wounds caused by spears, darts, and arrows. 40 of these bodies were women or children. From The Rational Optimist When I first learned about hunter-gatherers, I was taught they are generally peaceful because they are egalitarian, own no property to fight over, and are highly mobile. When intergroup conflicts arise, hunter-gatherers can just move. Elevated levels of interpersonal violence and large-scale aggression were attributed to the corrupting effects of contact with farmers and Westerners 15 however. Evidence for violence among pre-agricultural societies was always there if you looked. From Exercised 
why something we never evolved to do is healthy and rewarding. A Rosso-esque idol? The hunter-gatherers certainly looked like noble savages. Mm. Tall, fit, healthy, and having replaced stabbing spears with thrown ones, with fewer broken bones than Neanderthals. They ate plenty of protein, not much fat and ample vitamins. In Europe, with the help of increasing cold, they had largely wiped out the lions and hyenas that had both competed with and preyed upon their predecessors, so they had little to fear from wild animals. No wonder nostalgia for the pesto scene runs through many of today's polemics against consumerism. Jeffrey Miller, for example, in his excellent book Spent, asks his readers to imagine a Cro-Magnon mother of 30,000 years ago, living in a close-knit clan of family and friends, gathering organic fruits and vegetables, grooming, dancing, drumming and singing with people she knows, likes and trusts, the sun rising over the 6,000 acres of verdant French Riviera coast that her clan holds. Life was good. Or was it? From The Rational Optimist. One of the stories that I wrote um, a few, like not years ago, but a little while back was actually about this idea of like cave painting. Um, I, I forget what it was called, Dance Till You're Dead. And I was kind of like looking at this notion of what, what like kind of other societies look like if they... Um, were kind of religious and spiritual but not necessarily um at all similar to ours right like the kind of idea of like can a non-human species have human intonations um but also can a non-human species be able to understand language and kind of like talk about that idea so this was a fun story i think the ideas that i was looking at um were talking about like creativity and like leaving things behind as well as kind of like asking questions about uh, what it, what it means to to kind of like have a culture in the first place. So I think that this is a interesting place to start. I liked the idea of hunter gatherers being peaceful because they're egalitarian, um, but you know, or or just kind of like this idea of like a Hunger Gamesian almost type thing. Um, with like all these <laughs> hunter gatherer kind of like tribes, I think that's a good place to start. Um, man is wolf to man, kind of like we are our own worst enemy in a way. Uh, paste. I think that that's a that's a, also a good place to start. So let's put these two here. I this has kind of reminded me again of kind of like culture being a thing and kind of like a hunter gatherer culture versus modern culture. So I'm wondering if we can get something different from that. So hunter gatherer culture versus modern culture. A lot has been written on this, I think especially recently because people are kind of getting really sick of technology and modernity and kind of like what it's done to our <laughs> prefrontal cortexes and uh, the fact that we live a lot longer, but we're all a lot sadder. So being able to, um, oh wow, this is the same. It pulled up the same thing. So maybe I don't have that much more on hunter gatherer culture. Uh, let's see. Let's zoom into this a bit. Maybe we can delve on man is a wolf to man. Because I think that there's like some kind of stuff there about again like predation and stuff that could be pretty cool. Oh, we saw that one already. Okay, so this is pretty interesting. It's kind of like saying that a lot of those who died in war didn't die directly of war causes.
I like this concept. This is an interesting concept. Is that right? Oh, during the 20th century. I was thinking, because there's like 7, 8 billion people now, so 2 billion is way more than... That's like a quarter. It's 25%. It's actually crazy that only 100 million people died during the 20th century, because World War II was in the 20th century, and that was like the bloodiest war mankind's ever seen, right? Hmm. of adult males. But really it's like the the majority of the casualties it seems are the people who die because of the people who die in the war, right? It's like, oh, you lose your provider basically, then everybody else kind of starves because they can't provide for themselves like the young particularly. Mm. Okay, so what direction is the story? Let's, uh... Greenify these. And then... Let's make a new thing called... Storyboard.
to an empire state of ghosts with the tits in my face. I might roll up in a Bentley or a Christian or a Bentley on a blind eye.
Okay, I think I'm going to pause here and see where I'm leaving off. So basically the high level concept is I'm wondering about kind of like game theory. I'm wondering about morality uh, and its relationship with technology. Um, Hunter gatherer societies being different than the kind of modern civilizations where we all plant our food and have credit cards and everything like that. Um, the kind of what does no one have powers this actually reminds me of uh incredibles and then basically i'm thinking that the story is going to be centered around a boy kind of like Juan from the Avatar. Oh, that's another one, dude. So many references. <laughs> and basically, it's just going to be a story about how the people handle this new found power. I like the idea of it kind of being like a walk from Amalus style, where it's like they know that it's going to be moral, like morally an issue and that people are going to die like on the battlefield, let's say that they're super powered people using it, but they don't actually die when they get stabbed by one of these spears. Uh, somebody else in their village dies, and then once the village is exhausted, then they die. That's at least the general idea right now that I'm running with, um, and kind of like how he got there. I have to think about a few other characters. I'm trying to keep these short so I can't like introduce a million characters, so I have to kind of like try and pare it down to a character, a few conversations, like a combat scene, because in the end, this is going to hopefully be like a 10 minute video. So I can't really kind of like have that many characters. I can have like two characters, two settings and like one combat scene and like a lesson takeaway. Um, but, uh, you know, the real world has nuclear bombs, which reminded me of like shard blades from Way of Kings, because they had it the same thing where there's like only a few shard blades in the world. Uh, from there we talk about like kind of like decision fatigue and this is kind of like game theory and stuff like that rationally human tendency to do things uh, hunter gatherer kind of warfare uh, kind of like what humans are predisposed to do versus like what we think we're doing um, I think this is uh, yeah nuclear bombs all this stuff is kind of grouped together too um, and then I have some concepts that I think could be cool um, for what is this? This is a pretty intense meeting. Uh, I guess that's kind of funny. I, I don't know exactly what to do with this yet, but I think that this one's closest to fight for your life, kind of like genuine fights and then warfare. And it's like basically this might be what the, um, the chief is like. But yeah, we have the Harry Potter, Elder Wand, Incredible Syndrome, Walk from Amalus, Nanika, and HSA and Hunter Hunter. When she um, wishes for something or when someone wishes for something, she kills them. And then Meruem, uh, who was born to rule over all life forms. So it's kind of like an evolution thing. Like, is it fair when biology does it as opposed to when a human creates it? So that's the general concept, but uh, I'm going to keep working on it and I'll probably be come live tomorrow and do it tomorrow. See where I get. Okay.